We want to make it clear that the people who are appearing as numbers in various reports of police brutality, or police brutality, I beg your pardon, and extrajudicial killings linked to the police officers and not just statistics, these are actually real people. They have names, they have faces, families, dependents, and they had hopes, and of course, they had dreams. Now, they include Yasin Hussein Moyo, a 13 year old killed on the 30th of March, right here in Nairobi. Maurice Ocheng, killed in Kisumu on May the 25th. Hamis Juma, beaten to death in Kuale on March the 27th. Calvin Somondi, also beaten to death on March the 27th in Homa Bay County. Peter Gesheru, a trader in Kawangware, who died on April the 4th. Eric Gethi, died on April 2nd in Ukunda. Idris Muholwe, a tomato vendor killed in Kakamega on April 7th. Ramadan Juma, a mentally ill 35-year-old man, allegedly beaten up by the police enforcing the curfew rules in Kakamega on the 2nd of April. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but a picture or pictures of victims of police brutality in these pandemic times. One of the latest is a man who was allegedly shot in Madare in the county of Nairobi during curfew hours. He's known as Vaite. Residents around the area say he is homeless and was shot by the police for being outside during the curfew hours. Charity Mwangi reports on the sad reality in the capital of a case that comes hot on the heels of another case, which fortunately did not turn fatal. Nighttime strolls have been considered illegal for two months now. When the streets turn ghostly quiet, the rulers of the night take over, stamping the authority every now and again. And wherever the police boots are heard, sometimes cries of agony follow, cries of brutal loss. The police have been accused of using excessive force when enforcing curfew, an action that is borderline criminal. In Madare 3C area, the fire of justice is raging, unable to be quenched following the murder of a homeless man fondly referred to by locals as Vaite. His body was found on the all bloody, sparking the anger of a group that has seen its fair share of police brutality over the years. So watu ni wale wanazungukaka usiku ujuaona pahali ya kurara. So mtu alikutwa tu kigafu na kwa na kuanza kushambuliwa na kupigwa risasi. According to area residents, the body of the deceased had gunshot wounds. These wounds fueled their suspicion that police had something to do with the murder. Na alikuwa amepigwa risasi moja ya tumbo na nyingine ya mguu na ya mkono. Maskari wanasoya kutulia watu wa bure kabisa. Malaki Museka Mawe you were about Kangaria on a Toma Josi. Nimutambao Mangozaka could call lax clothes. Anna Via Viata Vera Combo. Eh? They were watching a motor about to Kusulia or Samakwani on a woman to come away. Life has seemingly moved on in Madare just a day after the murder. Efforts to get comment from Starehe sub county commander Alice Kimeli bore no fruit as she claimed not to be aware of the incident that falls under her jurisdiction. Last week, Samuel Minor found himself on the receiving end of the said police brutality after he ran into police officers in Kahao West while trying to beat the curfew. He was lucky to have lived to tell his story. Nilikuwa nimeona mmoja sasa huyu mwingine tulipatana akani akaniambush akiwa akiwa karibu. Akanipiga tu na rungu. Today he is recuperating at his home. He filed a formal complaint, but he is yet to receive any response from my poor or the police. His effort to seek help was not an easy one, as the police denied him the pass that would have allowed him to move in the night and go to hospital. Nikaomba pidri sab nilikuwa ni miadrika sana pia iyo akaninima. So what as I even yet to know me but do sina pidri. To make the matters worse, his attackers are known to him. This now makes him afraid for his life. See any job. Sai yata kuishi si ishi kwangu sabu. Like I feel I'm being threatened 
I'm here to know my fate as a victim and what will come out of it. With curfew in place, many of these violent attacks happen without witnesses in sight. This appears to aggravate the public and their demand to have the curfew lifted altogether. Charity Mwangi, NTV.